as uh, Paul introduced earlier, uh, from Telecom Sud Paris, uh, Telecom Sud Paris, Sud Paris, if you want to call it that. Uh, I'm Olivier, and uh, here's Thomas. Um, so we're working near every uh, south of Paris, just close to Paris. Uh, we've been working on virtual labs and stuff like virtual, uh, virtual machines uh, for a collection of books initially. And then we're uh, working with Paul to try and bring useful uh, stuff for families. Um, it was a collection of books on uh, networking and telecommunications. So stuff where you have to teach students how to make different nodes on the network, uh, communicate somehow. So things that uh, you can do in a traditional lab, but uh, if you want to virtualize that, uh, it needs to, you need to have many virtual machines talking together on the virtual networks and all that. Um, and we are member of Institut Polytechnique of Paris, which is uh, something to <laughs> uh, I'm Aubert Dix, uh, Dix, for some people, no, no, uh, just Aubert Dix. Uh, and uh, Thomas is a Thomas Gonsalves. And uh, we try to publish everything we, we're doing on uh, those, on this uh, Git, GitLab uh, repo. So I want to make an introduction to two projects mainly, but uh, first I will uh, give you some kind of uh, state of the art. It's not really solid, but still. What we want to do is uh, to do distant learning, mainly in the context of MOOCs or in the context of uh, unsupervised uh, uh, work from our students at the university. Um, we would like to be able to evaluate what they are doing. Um, and or supervise what's happening on the platforms where stuff are running. Uh, we have some concerns sometimes with security, which could be like uh, if we give them some virtual machines to experiment, will they be uh, mining bitcoins or do nasty stuff? Um, and my focus is on industrialization and quality reuse, stuff like that. And I'm quite uh, fond of. Uh, Free and open source software, as you can read me from my t shirt or the stickers. Um, so, I, we only uh, talk about open source stuff. There are probably very interesting platforms on non open source uh, projects, but I don't care. <laughs> um, so, I, I've been teaching uh, web applications development, and I also had a, a, an industrial background, much like what. Uh, was mentioned uh, initially, and uh, I don't like to reinvent uh, the wheel every time. And, uh, so industrialization is a, is a key uh, purpose. So about virtual machines, maybe how many people have used uh, virtual box? Yeah, okay, I don't have to explain in details. Um, so sometimes what we do when we want to provide some uh, virtual environment for, for, for students, we, we take a graduate student and we or an intern and we ask them to do something and it's basically like taking snapshots of what is running on your machine. So we want to go beyond that and try to have something that is more industrialized where we can push a button and it can update uh, the environment or it is all scripted and so on. And we put all the sources in Git so that we can share and reuse and adapt and so on. Um, so, one of the technologies we've been interested in uh, recently are containers. Uh, maybe you know that uh, virtual machines are quite big, quite slow, because there is a lot of emulation of the system, uh, the, the, the lying the virtual. Um, devices and so on. So we ventured into the container uh, zone uh, because it's trendy and also because uh, we thought that we could produce lightweight environments. So if you're not familiar with Docker, for instance, uh, Docker is uh, one of the main container technologies. Uh, what we do is we describe what will become a virtual system, a virtual machine, a container, 
through uh, a Docker file, which is a, a set of instructions, basically saying, oh, I want to start from an Ubuntu system and I want to do apt-get install something and so on. And after all, maybe we, we, we install our own um, uh, lab resources. Um, so it's been quite popular in the industry with, uh, for software engineering because it allows a lot of uh, productivity. Uh, if you're familiar with the DevOps uh, world, um, people not only focusing on development but also focusing on later uh, de deployment. So uh, for us, it's a matter of use because you can find a lot of Docker files around uh, for a particular, I don't know, uh, for Elg because uh, you want to have uh, students working on the uh, social network uh, uh, application, so you can reuse bits of what's available for developing on Elm, but in a teaching context. Uh, it uses overlay file systems, a lot of uh, optimizations that make you very productive when you test, you, you, you package, you develop your labs uh, over, over and over again. Um, but uh, there's a concern about deployment. How can you deploy uh, container-based labs for students? So obviously there's the cloud, but can you manage that in the context of public or in the context of your university? Maybe you don't have a cloud internally and so on. So in terms of cloud, we've been uh, working on a few uh, techniques. Uh, first, we wanted to have um, something that is uh, graph graphical, to have a, a graphical desktop, so that even if we use containers, it looks like the traditional VM where you boot and have your, your console, your desktop console, and you use the mouse and so on. And you can experiment with uh, the applications. So there are these projects like uh, Guacamole or NoVNC that allow us to embed a graphical desktop in our container and give access to the machine or the, the container uh, through a web interface. Um, what can I say? Um, virtual networks is also something that is a uh, key for uh, networking lab experiments. So it's not always uh, obvious how to deploy virtual networks and virtual machines and can become quite complex. So that's, uh, but that's something that cloud uh, techniques uh, allows to do. Um, in the context of uh, the cloud, everything is executed remotely. So connectivity can become a problem for your students or your learners. So inside the university, maybe you have good Wi-Fi and so on. But if students are at home, what happens? Or if they want to work in the bus, but uh, not the <laughs> uh, they don't have a seat, but they don't necessarily have a connectivity to the cloud. So and vendor locking is a problem. If you deploy working on Amazon, how much do you depend on that particular cloud? Can you switch? So, uh, yeah, and Kubernetes, which is uh, something I will um, mention later. Uh, let's skip security. I can go back to that if you're interested. So, for the first presented, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, project I want to present, uh, it's called Lighteners. Have you heard about Lighteners already? Oh. Yeah, great. So lab tenures, for those who, those who don't know, uh, it's uh, been developed by the U.S. Uh, postgraduate, uh, uh, Naval postgraduate school. Uh, so military people uh, developed uh, um, a collection of 30 cybersecurity labs that you can execute on a virtual machine. So it comes as a virtual machine image that you run on your own laptop, standalone without connectivity to any cloud. And um, inside the machine, there are containers. So that's quite exciting for us because it mixes the power of containers and the, use, uh, uh, the ease of use of virtual machines. And key for uh, pedagogical work is, uh, pedagogical uh, concerns is personalization and auto grading. I don't know if you experimented with uh, those features. Uh, I find this uh, auto grading uh, particularly uh, interesting. It runs only Linux and uh, X applications in the labs. 
So it looks like that. So that's uh, Wireshark Lab. So Wireshark is a tool that allows you to explore captures of network traffic. So you can dig in the frames and, uh, and, and, and find what's in the packets, the internet uh, IP packets. So this is a virtual machine uh, running on virtual worlds, and it started a Google 2 uh, vertical desktop. And here are um, uh, the, the labs. Uh, uh, um, sorry. What the, the students must do. Uh, and work here. Yeah, work yeah, work work work. And, and, and here is uh, uh, the result of uh, launching um, Wireshark. So uh, they say, oh, uh, start Wireshark, open this file, do this and, and this. And then at the end, the student will save their work. And there will be a grading uh, phase. Uh, so the student will send uh, an archive that is collected of what they did uh, with, inside the, 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 the machine using this lab and the teacher will uh, run an automatic grading that will say, oh, they did open Wireshark, they did send uh, this file and in this file we found uh, the right information. So another hood for you guys that uh, probably understood that. So here is my machine, here is VirtualBox, and here is the virtual machine. Inside it, there is a, a, a guest Ubuntu Linux system running Docker, and a lab consists of many containers that are running connected full uh, virtual network. And what you do uh, as a student uh, who's running the lab, you connect with a few external um, uh, consoles to those tiny virtual machines that are inside the lab and you may uh, do uh, traffic, you may uh, explore uh, some applications like Wireshark or Bing or Tracewood or whatever. Um, so benefits, auto-grading, personalization, and uh, yeah, autonomous learning uh, if instructions are sufficient. Uh, concerns, uh, the language for autograding and stuff is a bit uh, ad hoc. Uh, it was developed for this project, so you have to learn that. And a bunch of Python scripts uh, that uh, make it work, but uh, maybe not as solid as a more mature solution. But that is quite interesting for me. I think I'll just, the reason why that site is very important is, is if somebody wants to use this technology where they have that technical support or experience with the, the virtual machines, it's going to be not possible for a normal computer scientist to get this up. Absolutely. Now, the second project I want to present is an uh, antidote. It's very young project. Have you heard of Antidote? No, it's very um, <laughs> old. So it was developed by folks at uh, Juniper or around Juniper. You probably know Juniper, the network equipment. Uh, and uh, they basically want to create a community of practice and, uh, and um, reuse and knowledge around the uh, network reliability engineering. Network automation, stuff like that. Virtual network provisioning on the cloud. So I'm not familiar with all those technologies. And still, uh, to support this community, they uh, created uh, a lab platform and a curriculum of resources to learn different techniques. And it's running over cloud. Um, platforms, uh, basically uh, over uh, Kubernetes, which is a cloud orchestrator, if you agree with me. And uh, it can be accessed through web browser. Um, it integrates Jupyter. How many people are interested in Jupyter? Jupyter Hub? Okay. Uh, what is interesting is that, contrary to that tenant, which works in my 
virtual machine on my computer here, everything works on the cloud in parallel. So as many students in parallel as the cluster can support. You can test it at this URL here. I can show you later maybe. But it looks like that. Oh, you can't see it much. Let's, let's try it. No. Wow. I'm trying to. Okay, that's it. Um, so if the white works, so it looks like that. You have a few lessons, and let's say I want to learn Linux basics. So it's provisioning a lab for me. So this lab will consist of uh, one single uh, virtual machine, which is actually a set of con containers, a pod in Kubernetes. Uh, uh, wording and uh, so here is my virtual machine here. Uh, so I can type commands. Uh, so it's a real machine, it's not a simulator. And on the left pane, I got instructions. Oops, yeah. Uh, and I can even click on stuff to auto copy paste snippets. So you may have found similar uh, environments on the web, like Katakoda, maybe other, probably other environments. So in principle here, I could have a set of virtual machines on to which I open uh, some consoles. So uh, it allows to have such an environment for every student. So basically you connect, it deploys something for you, and in parallel you have a set of labs performing on the cloud. So the architecture, um, you have your cloud running Kubernetes, many machines maybe, I read that. Uh, and Antidote is here, Syringe is the orchestrator, and Antidote Web is the web front end to access labs. And on top of that, a curriculum. So I made my own version of this architecture, which is a physical Kubernetes cluster, running container engines, and then for each student in parallel, a set of virtual machines, which are containers or pods, where I have my applications. So for instance, a virtual router and a Linux host, virtual router and a Linux host, and each student has their own virtual networks, and everything is provisioned automatically by Kubernetes, and everyone accesses their labs through the web front end, through workable that uh, eliminates this speech. So for a teacher who wants to deploy their course on a such platform, just uh, have to provide some markdown instructions for the left plane and a Docker file that says, Oh, I want like an Ubuntu system with uh, whatever application inside of the context. So pinch of level, and you can test it locally in a VM in a, in a virtual box, which allows you to run the, the full environment locally before deploying to the real cloud. So benefits, no installation for students, it's all done in a web browser. Potentially scalable de deployment if you have many students in parallel, and if you pay or you have a cluster uh, available for uh, running everything. Uh, and yeah, multiple labs in parallel. So that's quite interesting for us if you think about a university like uh, virtualizing the classrooms. Uh, of course, we have groups of like 24, 48 students for us. So we didn't try it really uh, yet, but uh, okay. okay. But you have either to pay or to host a Kubernetes cluster. <coughs> it's supposed to be Kubernetes uh, quite standard and so on, but you have to run it somehow 
monitoring the cluster and the traits that easily. And Antidote itself is a young project. Of course, again, I'm just focusing on open source stuff, uh, basically Linux stuff, but uh, maybe you can run Windows or other OS over uh, Antidote, but uh, it's not that uh, sure if you get good performance. So I want you to uh, maybe put some, some stuff on, uh, on the agenda for this discussion, but uh, maybe we can go in more details if you have questions, or maybe I, I, I will stop um, talking. But basically, uh, we've been working on, on trying to set up virtual environments. So we choose a virtualizer, it is uh, VirtualBox or will be Docker, and later on, it's always more or less the same. You choose a base system like Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora or whatever, and you add this solution package, and then some space, including what you need for your lab. Uh, and that's the key part uh, as an indicator to think about what the students will need and so on. Plus some magic, because uh, everything is not always easy to work. Uh, so to give you, uh, yeah, I, I will skip that. Um, yeah, my wish list, uh, more open source, more open educational resources in general, uh, and uh, more reuse to avoid reinventing the wheel. But there's a lot of work for uh, making all those technologies usable, a lot of UX uh, effort is needed. Uh, I didn't mention that, but uh, in principle, Paul said it, I think. Uh, it allows us to have more information with the LMS, the learning management system. Like if we have students performing the labs on the cluster and uh, on the same cluster we have Moodle, for instance, we can think about uh, getting tracks of activity, auto grading, and stuff. Um, and in general, uh, I'm seeking for improving the quality. Like uh, it has been tested, automatically tested, we can reveal, we can just have um, documentation about how we produce the environments and so on. So that's pretty much it. Uh, what we are going to do in the future is try to put some graphical desktop into a keynote and a contributor or two. That's on my roadmap. Um, yeah, try to secure stuff uh, and allow running traditional virtual machines on Kubernetes with good Um And maybe try to port labs between the two platforms because we maybe we want a security, a cyber security lab, but we want to run it in parallel on the, on the cluster. And much more testing about those uh, auto grading features that uh, are seem promising. But uh, I didn't manage to find the time to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're interested, uh, we can collaborate. Everything is uh, on GitLab as much as we manage to document it and, uh, and push. I think I'll add a couple of things you might want to look at. Uh, the company that was involved with doing uh, the Global Lab work with my project team just gave us a specification of the, 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 the image they use in their development. Um, in fact, Thomas just went away and used the technology to produce an image. And there's a little web page that is on the GitHub that shows that it only takes about two minutes to get the exact same image that the company's using, and it doesn't require any, any expertise whatsoever. Um, the other thing which I, I should mention is that the current auto grading and auto assessment is actually not quite what I really want. It's, it's, <laughs> it's done after the student has finished the task. And what we really want is to have it done. Continuing yes, in real time. Right. Yes. But I think that is probably worthy of a research PhD uh -huh. to, to go along with how to do that. Because it's not just a technological challenge, it's a pedagogical challenge. But in terms of the infrastructure, system. like would you work closely with the IT department to make sure they're happy and you're not hammering their resources, or is there any issue around that? <laughs> no, there's no problem. <laughs> there, there's a and yes, I can say that with all IT departments that work with computer science department, yeah. there's always a tension between who goes what and teaches what is going to be Yes, yeah. So we're always playing kind of this game of 
trying to reassure them. Uh, but I think virtualization is a win for both. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, things that we would, they wouldn't let us do in, in the real physical labs, we yeah. do in the virtual machines. Um, but there is this, I'm not saying it's a conflict, but it's yeah. a tension that exists. So how have we then been dealing with this? Because we produced a series of Docker containers for teaching in Korea. And we took a machine outside the infrastructure in the Institute, put it into the um, HANet infrastructure, so that's the, the national network um, guys, and we just put a web front end that gave you the usual, you know, you can interact at the bottom, you can edit on the top, and you can see your files inside, and just deploy them automatically one, one to one to the students. So then um, it was our server, so there's no capacity issues, it was our network, so there's no institute issues. And the fact that it was um, in a different country meant it was easier to get to. But the question I have is really from a public point of view, the global labs, specifically the problem you're trying to solve is to make sure that the work environment of the company is replicated quickly and deployable to students. Is that correct? That's, that's one side of it. Yeah. But the other side of it is I've also been running labs with the students. So the global, yeah. as I've talked, the global lab model is yeah. not just working for the company, but also every week the students have little tasks to do. Right, okay. uh, and currently, I haven't been using this technology for working with the group. Yeah. Um, but the goal would be that in every week when they've got a little hypothetical learning task to do, they will do it through these, these virtual machines. And for all the effort it takes to create this infrastructure to support it, do you think that's, that's extra effort that's worth it on terms of your time? Because I've done a lot of this stuff. This ends up being very specific, bespoke stuff for one group. It's really hard to move it around. Um, well, this is where I think we need to grow a community of reusable labs. Yeah. It, it, initially, it's a real effort. I mean, if you reach a kind of a critical mass of people yeah. sharing your material, it's always going to be cost, costly. But I think once you start building up, imagine if there was a, a sort of a a library of a thousand network labs uh, with different topics with people all around the world. You have already picked your them on the hub, um, Docker Hub or stuff, but it, it, it's not always uh, suitable. Okay, and, and the grading side of it also would have taken less. So there's two sides to this. One is creating the Docker container the lab itself, which you know has to be inside it. And we're being pushed by Amazon to kind of take their pre configured stuff and to be honest, we, we don't like them. Um, so that's fine, but the other is the deployment uh, side of that, which is the infrastructure to take the lab to use it to create, and, and actually even just the having out access to students in terms of logging in and all that kind of stuff is uh, another infrastructure piece. So for, for infrastructure deployment, uh, TLE and DDoT is quite exciting for me. Yeah. I, I, I just discovered it by accident because I was googling for Kubernetes and Guacamole. And sure. just pop that what antidote, what is it? Syringe, what thing? Yeah. And, and then finally I discovered the project. Uh, they're quite focused on uh, network automation, but I'm more interested in software engineering, for instance. Mm -hmm. But uh, the platform is uh, quite agnostic at the moment. So I, I have hopes. And I'm trying to contribute to, to make sure that uh, it's quite generated. Uh, so I'd like to follow up separately for this because we've been one of the virtual machines remotely for other courses. It was crowds, so we could actually. Virtualize it, but we've also tried to teach Docker, so you can't, you know, it doesn't work terribly well inside virtualization mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to follow up. And there's someone who works on some of the front end, so mm -hmm. we're just trying to create this generic uh, platform. All the grading is another thing. Yeah. Yeah. In, in terms of uh, community, I just uh, maybe want to mention two, two resources. Maybe uh, you heard about the brand in the in newsletters. Uh, uh, um, Transporting and the simulation where he reviews a lot of solutions. Uh, so he actually reviewed the uh, antidote and then that's something. But there are tons of um, environments because every university basically reinvented their own uh, variant. So you just have too many, but uh, yeah, that's that. And maybe some efforts of uh, Tony Hurst uh, that you probably know. Uh, he's been venturing uh, for open university. Um, sources uh, uh, through vocabulary, logging, and stuff like that. So we've been uh, exchanging a lot. And I, I did my own blogging uh, also sometimes. So I'm trying to share for myself because I'm getting old and uh, forgetting. <laughs> but also for any interesting parties. I have a couple videos if you want to see demos because that was mainly hardware. 
uh, but it depends on uh, your interest. Uh, I, I'm here in any case, I'm here as well. So, so.